call tonight. Uh, I, I've been visiting here a little bit with my grandparents coming up, and this truly is a great congregation to be at and to worship with. A wise man once said, the goodness of God is infinitely more wonderful than we will ever be able to comprehend. Uh, for those that don't speak any Spanish at all, like Sam Thornton, uh, the word on this, on the screen, it means God is good. And tonight I want to talk about how God's goodness could be seen on my trip to the city of children. So when we're talking about this topic, I believe it is so vitally important to see what the Bible says about this. Psalm 25 says, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Psalm 27, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 31, 19, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you, in the sight of the children of mankind. Psalm 34, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who takes refuge in him. To keep going in Psalm 107, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. That's in Psalm 119. And finally, in Nahum 1, verse 7, the Lord is good. In the day of trouble, he knows those who take refuge in him. So to start out on Sunday, we spent some time on the back side of the property, worshiping with our group on the mission team, and also spending some time in prayer and meditation. And this was to prepare our minds for the week that was ahead of us. After that, we headed down to the gym for bilingual, bilingual worship. And it's really interesting down there because... The guys, they sit on the left side of the auditorium, and the girls sit on the right side. So we sang some songs in Spanish and also in English, and John Thomas gave a lesson that morning to introduce the idea of the burning bush for the VBS that night. After worship, we took some group pictures out towards the front of the property, and we kind of stalled a little bit while the mamas and papas were cooking lunch for us. And I'll tell you all, I had some Mexican food today, that food down there is the real deal. We'll, get, we'll talk about more about that later. Speaking of talking, it is pretty hard to carry a conversation when each kid down there is laughing at the little bit of Spanish you know. Uh, I'll mention this real briefly. So throughout the presentation tonight, you'll see some pictures with the kids' faces being blurred out, and that is because some of these kids come from very harsh backgrounds, and the very last thing the missionaries and team down there wants to deal with is parents knowing where their kids are and different things like that. So that's just to let y'all know in advance throughout the presentation. So after lunch, we spent some time with the kids for some free time. The girls actually held a beauty pageant for the teen girls in their dorm. And if you have any questions about that, I would not ask me. I could not tell you what mascara does to this day. Jackson might know, but uh, so ask him instead of me. So after supper, it was our night one of VBS. We had four different groups for each night of VBS where girls would teach a girls class and the guys would teach the younger guys class. And our first night was over Jacob and Esau, and the whole point of our VBS was to connect the dots of Old Testament stories that we hear to Jesus. So going, since it was a week-long trip, I've decided to kind of break down the days that happened. And so first, from the morning, you can see that God's hand is seen through creation surrounding the city. Um, Psalm 8.3 talks about how God's work is seen in the moon and stars and how it reminds the psalmist of God's care. And our group that night talked a lot about what worship is and how no matter what language you speak or where you come from in that setting it is still worship and how in Ephesians 4 we're all united through Christ and finally there's a lot more work to be done this was just the first day and we'll, we'll get to talking about more about the rest of the week so each day we had three different groups for service projects and each group had a different day where they were assigned a different task and so my first day was we were on the campus wall. 
And what we did is we cleared out some brush along this wall surrounding the campus. We scraped the old paint off and we also repainted it. And groups later in the week, they also cleared out some of the brush around the rocks up on the hill. And that actually says, Ciudad de Niños, which means city of children. And if you're driving on the highway, you can see this out and it will let you know where you're at. So some takeaways from this wall. A lot of y'all are probably thinking, this is Mexico, it's in the summer, it's in the heat of the day, it must have been hot. It was a lot hotter there than it was in here this morning. But some of y'all are probably thinking, that must have been miserable for y'all to be out there doing that work. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all, it really wasn't that bad. And there's a reason behind that. One of the girls walked up to me as soon as we got up on that wall, and she said, Connor, let's sing as we work. And I was kind of taken aback by that at first. But I said, you know what, let's do it. So it started off as one song, turned into two, which turned into about five, which turned into past ten. We sang for the next two and a half hours while we were on that wall. And this reminds me of Paul and Silas' situation as they were thrown into prison. In Acts 16, it says that at midnight they were praying and singing to God, and the prisoners were listening. Later in our discussion groups that night, the idea of creation was brought up again, and how no matter where you are on the campus, you can see God's creation. But someone tied the point in that the, the wall that you see right here, uh, there's a piece that is broken out, and down at the bottom right is part of the tuna factory. And then out further, that's the Pacific Ocean right there. And someone made the connection to the hardship of the Christian life, but the reward to come. The, picture, the spot where that picture was taken was high up on this hill. So you had to walk up this entire hill. Like I said, it was very hot. So the time you got up there, you were tired and pretty sweaty. But as soon as you got up to that spot, you felt a huge gust of fresh air. Make that comparison to finally hearing well done, good and faithful servant one day. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But the question is, how bad do you want that? More on that concept later. Night two of VBS was over Joseph and his brothers. And after each night of VBS, we kind of had a period of time of activities and games with the kids. Night three was Moses in the burning bush, and we actually had s'mores and a bonfire that night to kind of resemble the burning bush. Uh, the last night of EBS was over the plagues and the Passover. So going back to group projects, while we were on, uh, while we were on the campus wall, another group was actually painting a part of the local church. And when I say local, it was actually an hour and a half drive away on some of the worst ro roads you could have possibly driven on. There's a lot of bad drivers in Tennessee, and some of y'all might be in that boat. But imagine Tennessee drivers with no lines on the road. Just imagine that. That's also our principal uh, wrestling a kid uh, up against the freshly painted wall. So we had some fun down there. But after that was some of the best Mexican food you could ever ask for. Brother Franco, the preacher at the church, his wife and his family put on a meal for each group down there. And we had cheese quesadillas, beans, brown rice, a uh, Mexican soda called Squirt and Coke, and I'm not trying to make y'all hungry, but we'll get out of here soon enough. Just bear with me. And so when thinking about where this church is and the work that the church does down there, I thought about how blessed we are in, in Middle Tennessee and in our communities to have multiple churches in our area. We have other brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage us and to build us up, and that is truly a blessing. A lot of these people in Brother Franco's congregation are walking miles from their houses to get to church every time the doors are open. And sometimes they're walking down from the mountains up there. But my question is, do you have that kind of dedication to the Lord's church? In Revelation 3, 15 and 16, it says, I know your works. You're neither hot nor cold, cold nor hot, or that you are either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Do you want that reputation to be said about you or about your church family? Do you want to be spit out of the mouth of God? To kind of take a break 
and some of the takeaways. takeaways. Uh, I'm going to go through some pictures we had during our free time. Uh, there, there's a picture of a kid showing off uh, the telescope that he had. He also brought out his Minecraft swords, and that was actually our translator down there with him. Uh, these are some other pictures at some Gaga ball. Uh, this last picture right here is was actually in the baby dorm, and Miss Lisa Bennett actually headed up that project. And so, with VBS and in on our last night of Wednesday, we actually had one more night with the kids, and we decided to hold a Thursday night festival. And this is where we dressed up in an array of costumes, as you can see. Someone dressed up as a pickle. Um, but we, we each had different roles and different stations to be at. And those roles included hosting some games, painting faces, and we also had a bouncy house for the kids. With that being the last night at the city, that was also our final goodbye to the kids. They all lined up, and we each came through and gave hugs, cried, and said one last adios. As sad as the goodbyes I gave were, it was nowhere close to one of the goodbyes my classmates had to give. Right here is Bennett, and the kid next to him is Jawan. And the reason I'm able to show a picture of Jawan is because his parents actually are working at the city. So Bennett went down to the city his junior year. They had a smaller group go down because of a lot of COVID restrictions, but it was immediate since day one that Bennett and Jawan had a connection. They were inseparable. Over the next year, after Bennett got home, he would write letters to Juwan, and he would ultimately write them back. That goodbye was hard for Bennett and Juwan both, but that is the kind of bond that has happened because of the city and because of the support that has been of the city. And if you thought that was sad, buckle up and bear with me for a few more moments. The last service project that each group did was food relief, and so we would go to Walmart and buy a bunch of groceries and go to Brother Franco's house and distribute them in different bags. And after that, he would take us on one of the vans over to the community behind the church. And our first stop was actually at an elementary school. We stopped by during their recess hours and played some with them. It has been said that play is a universal language and boy is that statement true. For a playground, these kids have a concrete slab, and it's, it's not a lot, but these kids are happy. There's a lot of chase or tag being played. I made a friend down there on that, that playground, and his name was Cinco. He, I, I'm very confident in my Spanish ability, and I'm very positive. I did not ask him how old he was, but we're just going to roll with that. Was, Cinco was his name. He wanted to climb up on my shoulders, and so I was kind of hesitant at first, but I let him get up. And as soon as he got up there, I felt a huge slap on my back. Ow, that kind of hurt. Uh, I might have had a few tiny baby noises, Lanny, but it, it really did hurt. And as soon as he got up there, he said, Andale, Andale, me, me go. For Sam back there who can't understand Spanish, that means hurry, hurry, my friend. Just in case you're a little slow tonight. So I ran around the slab a couple of times with them, and someone was taking our picture. And the last picture right here is actually my favorite on the trip, just because of the pure joy I felt at the time. After the recess time was over, all the teachers were lining them up, and we gave out some toys and some fruit snacks as they went back to class, and we also gave our last goodbye to the kids. When I was talking to, when I was talking to my buddy Cinco, he asked me, hasta mañana. He was asking me if he would see me the next day, and I said, no, mi amigo. He then asked me about the day after tomorrow, and I had to say, sorry, but no. That was probably the hardest goodbye for me on the trip. And that was with the kid that I'd played tag with for about 15 minutes. After we left the playground and the school, we went to the homes of the members of the church in El Zorio. We gave them bags of the food that we had prepared and also some hygiene kits that we had made as well. Brother Franco would go and ask them if they had any 
prayer request, and all of them had something to say. Uh, we, we came up with the idea that each guy, when we came to each house, would have a scripture to read in Spanish, would lead a song, and that song usually was God is so good, and finally pray with it being translated. And then it was on to the next house. During my trip coming back, we actually stopped abruptly in the middle of the road. And at first I thought it was because Brother Franco had saw someone he knew and they needed help. So just out of habit, a few of those guys got out of the van with our Bible, the hygiene kit, and the food bag and stepped out onto the road. As soon as we stepped out there, we realized that something was not right. Something was wrong. There was a little girl, probably about four years old, who was walking around in the street barefooted. And some of you all might not bat an eye like that, but this road is disgusting. It's very muddy, a lot of trash, broken glass, and it's just an unsanitary place to be. Brother Franco talked to one of the ladies who lived on that street, and the lady agreed to take care of the girl until her mother came looking for her. That was a hard sight to see, and it was a lot worse than seeing houses made out of recycled materials, or the, like I said, the muddy roads, or even the dirt floors. And it was hard for me because the point was made to our group that it wasn't an uncommon event to see that happen. So when we discussed the day's event that night in our discussion groups, we prayed for the little girl hoping that she made it back home to her mother. And it, it made me realize later on that we are physically blessed individuals. We live very comfortable lives here in the U.S. But my question here for you today is how are you using your blessings for the kingdom? It could be with money or material things or other things God has blessed you with. But how are they being used? Another discussion point that was brought up is how you can see the goodness of God in the kids. And it reminded me of a passage in Luke chapter 18. If you will turn with me there real quickly. Luke 18:15 through 17. It says, Now they were bringing even infants to them that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called them, called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. When I read this passage, the picture right here is what I imagine the disciples thought the children were doing to Jesus, not giving him any space at all, talking about a lot of kids coming up to him at once. But Jesus looks at them and says, let them come to me. Another point that was made that night is the song, Dios Bueno Es, which is God is Good. And coincidentally, Every group, when they went out on food relief, sang that song. And our principal told us that night during discussion group that after years of food relief, it had hit him why it was so important. You see, the community down there is very close together. And I don't mean relationally with each other. I mean they live in very close quarters. So the house next door to someone getting food relief is hearing about how God is good in their own language and ask themselves what these crazy Americans are doing down here. They then find out that they're with the church in El Zorio, and they start going to church, hoping that they too could get food relief. And while it might not seem like a good reason to go to church, they're going with their family, and a lot of them are going every Sunday. And a lot of these families that are going end up becoming baptized, because they get in the door and they realize I need to make a change, and I need to make it now. So they end up giving their lives to Jesus and being faithful servants. This idea hit me with a quote that I saw. The quote is, show me a church's songs, and I'll show you their theology. This is an idea that I have found fascinating over the last few weeks, and I believe it is very true. Every song that we have sang here today, we believe is true to some extent. Whether it is about creation, the resurrection, or about the goodness of God, we believe it is true. And here are some songs that we often sing. There's a new one that's straight from Psalm 34 that was read earlier. It says, O taste, o taste and see that the Lord is good. O blessed is he who hides in him. 
another newer song called The Goodness of God. It says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. And then the next verse says, A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. He taketh my burdens away. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. To keep going. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Finally, God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. I love him so. He's so good to me. God sent his son. He's so good to me. You see, there's a key event that happened on this trip that I have not told y'all about yet. It happened one morning when the kids were at school and John Thomas held a devo for the papas at the city. If I haven't explained it yet, these individuals are adults who come to the city to be a parent mentor for these kids. They work 24-7, 365 days a year, and are taking care of roughly 13 or 14 kids per dorm. And believe it or not, each one of these individuals are not Christians. Uh, during this morning devo, the topic of salvation came up. And the papas that were there knew which papa wasn't a Christian yet. And what ended up happening was the papa who wasn't a Christian yet started reading from this one passage. Halfway through, he got choked up. And what started as being just a little bit choked up turned into tears. Tears from a grown man. One of the other papas put his arm around him and finished reading the scripture for him. I wish I could tell y'all tonight that this particular papa was baptized that day. He wasn't. And I know what some of y'all might be thinking. Connor, why are you here today explaining how God is good if this individual wasn't baptized on the mission trip? You almost had him. He, he was thinking about it. You were close. Y'all have failed. The trip was for nothing. Back in June... Papa Juan was baptized into Christ for the remission of his sins. And I'm not done yet. Two of the guys in his dorm made, made the decision to on the same day. And I've heard since then that three more individuals out of the city have given their lives to Christ. If you're still asking why God is good, that is why. God sent his son. He's so good to me. Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that phrase, fall short, is so important because it is a continuous thing. We're going to continue falling short. We're going to continue to sin throughout our lives. But it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. Papa Juan realized this. What now, he might have asked. Romans 5.8 tells us, But God proves his own love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, Papa Juan might have asked, or he might have said to himself that Jesus died for me, but how can I be saved from these sins? 1 Peter 3.21 tells us that baptism saves us. Okay, but what happens when you're baptized? You see, he, he could have kept asking these questions. He got to Galatians 2, which is the one that he ended up breaking down at. Galatians 2 tells us that we, including our sins, are crucified with Christ, and he now lives in us. Okay, he, he still might have asked the question, I've been baptized, but what do I need to do next? What do you do with the good news of Jesus Christ? Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So the answer to the question, go tell it. If you can't tell already, I like to sing. I've mentioned a lot of songs tonight that you might be familiar with or might not be. I'm not the best singer, but I still love to do it. And there's a song that we sing at camp and at 
the city and also at school and chapel, and it's called He Sweet I Know. And some of y'all might not be familiar with it, but these are the lyrics. It goes, He's sweet I know, oh he's sweet I know. You know that storm clouds will rise and strong winds will blow. But I'll tell the world, I'll tell them everywhere I go, I'll tell them that I have found a Savior, and he's sweet I know. Maybe someone here tonight has realized that they have sinned in their life, that they have hurt God. There's water right behind me that is waiting for you to be saved and for you to die to your sins and give your life to Christ. Maybe someone here tonight has not been a faithful Christian recently, and that needs to change before it is too late. We're about to have an invitation song where you can come forward and we can talk more about that and that decision. But I don't want anyone here today to leave not knowing that there is a Savior and He is sweet, I know. Please come as we stand and sing. Is there anyone here that didn't have the opportunity to 